Greetings, brethren. This is Emmanuel Fernandez with uh, Biblical Science. And uh, today the Lord put on my heart about a uh, really, really uh, uh, topic I don't, I don't hear about that often. Uh, the you understand what I'm talking about as I get into it. But how do you truly know someone saved? Then can you truly know someone saved? That includes yourself, by the way. Uh, the devil, they don't call the devil the father lies for no reason. Well, I think the main reason why they call him that he, he makes you lie to yourself pretty good. A lot of people are in hell because of that reason. Because they bought into the lie that the devil fed to themselves. It's called co cognitive dissonance, lying to yourself. It's, it's a good example of these pastors that preach the King James Bible. They memorize it. Seem to obey it. Behind closed doors, they don't believe it. Why? The devil made them believe falsely that they believe in King James Bible. So good that they project it outwardly, but inwardly, they don't believe it. There's a reason why Jeremiah says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God can know it. So, my question, answer to that question can you tr know someone's truly saved? Yes and no. You. Can you know yourself you truly saved? Absolutely. 1 John 5.13 One of the verses that every Christian should know by heart. Not word for word, but you should understand the gist of it. It's not that you may believe you have eternal life. Because beliefs, the devil loves beliefs. Because they can twist it and change it. Okay? The devil loves you believing in something. Because he can twist that, take it apart. The devil cometh... Devil cometh and take the word out of their hearts. Belief's not good enough. It's that you may know you have eternal life. Well, they're the same thing. No. I don't have to believe I'm a man. I know I'm a man. I don't need to pull my pants down to make sure. <laughs> Sorry to be crude, but that's the way, way, best way I can explain it. Know and belief are not the same thing. God does not want you to believe you're saved because he knows the devil will eat, have you for breakfast, and make you doubt your salvation. Every time. He wants to, you to know full assurance. That's not blind faith. Okay? So, this, are you supposed to know you're truly saved yourself? Absolutely. Or else he wouldn't say that. But that's not what this video is about. It's about other people. How do I know someone is truly saved? You don't. Well, how am I supposed to fellowship? You have to take it by faith. Truly know someone else is saved is you being God. Your God. So, hey, a lot of these Christians saying, I know he's saved. I know he's truly saved. Well, you must be Jesus Christ. You know their hearts. No. You have to take it by faith that they're saved. Okay? Faith. I'm not saying he's blind, though. Well, I'm just going to fellowship with this guy. Yeah, I don't think he's saved, but I'm going to fellowship him. Because he just said, we can't know he's truly saved. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to go by faith. So, this video is about. Ways, how, how do you truly know, well, I'm, see, I'm using the same terminology. How can you have strong faith, let's put it that way, that someone's saved? And we'll go by the criteria. Now, this is exception to the rule, okay? A lot of people says, you know by changed life. You know by the fear of the Lord. You know by them believing the gospel. Well, this video is saying, uh-uh. I don't believe that. That's true across the board. What I'm saying is, change life, belief in the Lord, and fear. I believe there's exceptions. Absolutely. I believe there are people in hell right now that have a changed life, that believe in God and fear the Lord, but still went to hell. So I believe you cannot honestly use those three criteria and put it on someone and say, they have a changed life, they believe in the Lord, they fear in the Lord, they're saved. No. Not across the board. I'll break, don't worry about it. I'll break down case by case for each of those reasons why that's not the case. Let's go with change life. Um, I have a cousin. Uh, well, first of all, I have, let's talk about the speech I watched on YouTube called Adam. He's a street preacher. Change life. He said he was a drug dealer, you know, wicked man. Felonies, everything. Wicked man. 
uh, believes in the Lord, has faith in the Lord, memorizes scripture. This guy's a walking Bible. He can quote scripture. His scripture is in his speech. An abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Quote scripture. Uh, people uh, rebuke him and and yell at him. He he preaches in beaches. He doesn't. He's not like these preachers that preach in places where they barely meet people. He's in the thick of it. He's in beaches. People. He's surrounded literally by crowd. They go to him. They curse at him. They hit him. He responds with love. Uh, he fears the Lord. That's why he preaches. Fear the Lord. Believe in the gospel. I don't think he's saved. I don't think he's saved. Well, you must be here to you not be saved. I don't think he's saved. What is your pattern? What is your basis? What do you base that on? Scripture. Well, what is the 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 one that's more? What is the most important criteria than those three things that you just say that that trumps them all when it comes to someone being saved? Simple, obedience. The devil worketh over the children of disobedience. It can't go by changed life because I know I know family members. I know the before and after of them. What what do you mean by that? I've been, I know them all their lives. They changed. They don't square no more. They do good things. I don't think they're saved. So, and this guy Adam changed life. I don't think he's saved. Belief. He has belief. I don't think he's saved. Of course he has fear of God. I don't think he's saved. I think it's obedience. Well, he, of course he obeys the gospel. He's out there street preaching. I, not the it. Can you disobey God and still be saved? Yes, it's obedience of core scripture, core fundamental beliefs. I think that's the what you can hang your hat on and say, okay, I believe you're saved. Because it, those people that says, okay, change life. That's absolutely change life is the reason why you say, well, how can you explain carnal Christians? Don't tell me there's not a Christian there out there that's a habitual fornicator and he's saved. Do not tell me there's not. Explain carnal Christians. Christians that look like the world, act like the world. They're saved. They're saved. But I thought it was changed life. Clearly his life's not changed. He's doing the same thing before. But he's saved. Why? He obeys sound doctrine. Let's 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 put it this way. Let's relate it to devils and Satan. Satan knows scripture. He knows the Bible better than me and you. He's in it. He was around before the Bible was even written. He must be saved by your criteria. I'm sure he can quote scripture. The devil quotes scripture even if it suits his needs. William Shakespeare. Or it must be belief. Well, the devils believe in God. They must be saved too by your description. Or it must be fear. The devils believe in tremble. So what what is the prime reason why the devils can't be saved and I can't? Obedience. Well, they obeyed Christ when he said, leave this man and fall into the swine. Yeah. Did they... But if they truly obeyed God, they wouldn't fall in the first place. That's my point. Saying truly, I'm talking about true obedience. That's what I'm trying, that's my point I'm going to cross. You know you're saved and you know someone's saved. Remember, you don't know them truly because you don't know their heart. But you can rest assured they're saved if they truly obey sound, fundamental doctrine. True obedience. Can't say that about Satan because if he was truly obedient to God, he would never fall. Can't say about the devils. If they truly obeyed God, they will never fall. And God knew they will not truly obey Him. That's why they, He predestinated them not to fail. Do I believe God does not predestinate people to hell? No, He doesn't. Does He predestinate people not to fall? Absolutely. How do you explain the angels? God predestined certain elect angels not to fall because He knew they will. Okay? So, that's the point of this video. I mean, I'm not going to ramble long, but. Uh, I'm, now, am I saying they're not going to have a cha change life? Is not a good indicator of saying, find someone to be saved or not? It's not a good, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's an exception. Okay? I'm just saying there are people out there change life. They believe in God and they fear Him. They're not saved. You can apply that to me. When I was saved, I was carnal. You couldn't tell I was saved. I still feared God. I feared God before I was saved. What's changed? Just my fear is godly fear now. There's a difference. The difference between fear of God and godly fear. There's a difference between obedience and true obedience. That's the difference. Okay, there's two types of repentance. Worldly and godly. Discernment is knowing the difference. Truly knowing the difference. 
So, I mean, when you, like, for instance, when you want to dissect someone because you're supposed to try the spirit, see if they're of God, you can't, you can't say, oh, changed life, he's definitely saved, or, oh, he believed, definitely saved, or he feared God, he's definitely saved, because that's true of this guy named Adam in YouTube. I believe all those two, three things, all those three things about him are true. Well, why he's not saved? Then? Give me some scripture why he's not saved. Simple. He believes that we, you, we don't willfully sin when you're saved. No, he's not obeying scripture. But yeah, he's a walking Bible. We quit scripture, King James scripture, by the way. Oh, like me, he's, your word, your, the Bible is supposed to be right here. Reading and understanding the Bible is not enough. Memorize it, it is not enough. You have to obey it from the heart. You obey that form of doctrine that was delivered. Obey from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you. Romans. I just memorize it. Am I saved? No. I obey that scripture. He doesn't. Because any Christian out there knows we willfully sin. Don't give me that trash that you don't willfully sin. Okay, that's why there's a, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, He who covers covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses it and forsakes his sin shall have mercy. That is not for the lost. The lost do not confess their sins. The lost supposed to ask forgiveness for their sins. Only the saved can confess their sins to God. So that scripture is doctrinally directed to saved people. Okay? This guy Adam is covering his sins, saying he does not willfully sin, that he only sins out of ignorance. He's not obeying scripture. And by that, He's not saved. Even though he changed his life, he knows scripture by heart, he believes in God, and he preaches fear, God, judgment, and hell. I don't think he's saved. I told you, devil is a father of lies. He makes, well, the devil has him, and, he, and he's making him believe falsely that he obeys doctrine from the heart. He doesn't, because if he did, he was, he was a Christian by five years, by the way. You mean to tell him the Holy Ghost... Five years did not convict him that, hey, wait a minute, you're, you're preaching false doctrine. Of course you can willfully sin. Paul said, evil soul is present with me, sin soul dwelleth to me. And that's years after he was saved. Don't ask Paul if you can willfully sin or not. So that's one thing he's off on. Another is that you can lose, lose eternal salvation. That, that's a giveaway, dead giveaway. Again, change life. Now, could he be lying about that? Sure. But I believe when he says change life, he fear has fear of God. He believes in God. But he's not for eternal security. And don't forget, this is a street preacher going out there in beaches with the courage, boldly speak the word without fear. I don't even know if I have that courage yet. I mean, I, I witness to people, but I'm not in uh, the... Remember, don't forget, the Lord call, doesn't call everyone to street preach. Okay? You need to obey, again, obey God. Okay? Just be, don't tell me I'm a coward just because I'm not street preaching. Maybe because God does not want me to. God does not want anyone to do everything the same way. Okay? I have witnessed to people. I witnessed to lost relatives. And I do tract. Okay? But this guy has strong courage. Or he must be saved. I don't think so. I don't think so. He's not for eternal security. I don't think so. He's not obeying from the heart. Okay? And he has that courage. Don't tell me he has no courage. He's out in the beaches preaching to people. They're surrounding him and attacking him. He got arrested. Could that be a ploy, you know, just for publicity? Could be, but I think it's true. But what's the point of this video is how devil deceives us. We underestimate him constantly. Take heed lest you fall. Kevin Hovind knows what I'm talking about. Because I believe he saves. And and look at him. You know? Well, he's not obeying scriptures. Uh, he's not obeying sound scriptures. So by your definition, he's not saved. No. He is saved. God's not going to allow that. That's the key. God, here's another key indicator. Chastening. Matter of fact, I put chastening above all. Here's my criteria. How do I know someone's saved? I'm not known because I'm not God. Here's my criteria for knowing someone is saved. Okay? It's not changed life. It, although it is one of the facts. I'm talking about the chief factors. Chief above all else. Number one is obedience of sound doctrine. Of the core scripture. Obedient. Do they obey? I don't care if they can memorize it. They can say it out of command. Do they really obey it? Well, how do you know? If I rebuke him, I emailed him, by the way, this guy I got him. By his response, I, I can confirm if he's saved. Because someone that's truly saved is who will, will obey sound rebuke. If the Holy Ghost rebukes someone with scripture, they are ordered to obey truth. Not love truth, obey it. So I go by obedience to scripture. That's number one. 
Chase in England is number two. Absolutely. Ken Hovind is not going to go like the way he is without being chastened and not ultimately a sin unto death, which is only for the saved person. Okay, That's what this video is about. Can it, it, our change life should be a criteria? Absolutely. Should belief, belief be a criteria? Absolutely. Fear God? Absolutely. But there are exceptions. And I believe Adam is the exception. Because he changed, has a changed life. He feared God and trembled. Well, devils also believed and trembled. Okay? And I know, like I said, I know family members would have changed life. And I don't think they're saved. Okay? Okay? So, just be wary about it, uh, brethren. Uh... Well, how do you know I'm saved? How do you know you're saved? Well, I apply to my, I practice what I preach. Okay? Do I have a changed life? Absolutely. Do I believe in God? Absolutely. Do I fear God? Absolutely. But uh, that's not what I hang on my salvation on. I obey sound doctrine. I'm a children of obedience, not disobedience. That's the main thing. And I will get chastened. If I sin and ultimately a sin unto death will fall upon me if I'm in constant disobedience. Now, don't twist my words just because, okay, this guy, I rebuke this guy. He didn't, he he disobeyed scripture. He's not saved. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying he okay, he disobeyed scripture. Which scripture disobeyed? Did he disobey scripture telling him that the earth was flat? Is that a damnable heresy? Will he go to hell just because he disobeyed that scripture saying the earth was flat? Or he disobeyed the fact that God predestinates people to heaven. He's not saved. Is that will that impact the salvation? No. He disobeyed scripture saying there's no such thing as eternal security and you can willfully you can uh you, you you're not supposed to willfully sin. You you only sin by ignorance. Yes. You see what I'm getting at? That's sound doctrine. That's core doctrine. That's fundamental doctrine. That's the milk. You want to test someone saved or not? Give them milk. Everybody knows I'm saved. Who, who are saved know what I'm talking about. Give them the milk. Give them the core milk. Core. Fundamentals of salvation. Repentance. Then belief. Not faith alone. This trash I'm hearing. Faith alone in Christ. They're not saved. They could probably have a changed life. These people that says faith alone in Christ. All you have to do is faith alone in Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Just believe in Him and you'll be saved. Fear God. They probably have a changed life. They probably do believe in Jesus Christ. They probably do have fear of God. But they do not obey sound scripture. If they did, they would know better that it's repentance from God, not at work. Godly repentance, not worldly repentance, is the reason why you're granted salvation. That's all I'm saying here. All those who are truly saved knows what I'm saying. By the fact that you obeying what I'm saying right now is a good conviction of you telling yourself if you're truly saved or not. Because no one can tell you you're saved or not, but yourself in God. That's why no one on this planet can tell me if I'm saved or not. Nobody. Only God in me. Because God wants you to know you're saved. Not so-and-so down the street to know you're, he's saved or not. You have to go by faith that he is. You try the spirits. A true Christian will not rebuke sound scripture. There's a lot. Here's another really, really good, easy, 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 easy way to know someone is not saved. Real easy. I don't think you're saved. I don't think you're born again. How do they respond? If it was with anger, how dare you say I'm not saved? Blah, 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 blah. I'm saved. And they get, quote scripture. Someone reacts in anger when I tell them they're not saved. They're not saved. Okay? You can tell me I'm not saved all you want. I want to be like, oh, yeah, whatever. I know what's in my heart, man. I know I'm saved. That's really good. That's a dead giveaway. Those are easy. There's a lot of, a lot of these people that Preachers preach to them on the street. Hey, I don't think you're saved. How they react? Anger. How you tell you I'm not saved? Of course I'm saved. That's them lying to themselves. Call me the dissidents. How you say I'm not saved? Blah, 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 blah. Not one scripture comes out of their mouth. Of course I'm saved. Blah, 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 blah. Not one script. They're not saved. I have a cousin like that. I'm saved. I'm born, born again in scripture. I'm born again Christian. I'm saved. I believe in God. He probably does believe in God. He probably does fear God. Or else he wouldn't do the things he did. This cousin I'm talking about, he was in prison. Changed life. He doesn't do that stuff no more. He must be saved. That's what I'm saying. You can't always go by changed life. I have two brothers. Went to prison. They went to prison. They they did all sorts of bad stuff. Wicked people. 
They're family men now. One's married. Uh, we we were indifferent, but now we're you know I'm not saying we're close buddies because we're supposed to be separate, saved and lost, but we get along. By your definition, he must be saved, changed life. Don't tell me he doesn't have a changed life. No, he's not saved. He believes in God. He's not atheist. Oh, he must be saved. No, he feared God. Oh, he must fear God, or else he would do the same thing again. No, obey sound scripture. Obedience of core fundamental scripture. Remember what I told you. If you can't explain this to a child, you don't know it. I'm done. I don't have nothing to say. I think I spoke my piece. Those who are truly saved will take this milk I'm giving them and say, you know what? He's right. He's absolutely right. I cannot go 100% by change life, fear God, and belief in God. He's absolutely right. I got to go by do I really obey the Bible? That's a question anyone should ask. Remember, even David said, I believe, help me with my unbelief. Oh, he must not be saved. Even he said, I go through unbelief. Can't go by belief. The, the, David must not have fear of God because he willingly committed adultery with Bathsheba and he killed Uriah. Does that change life? No, he eventually obeyed God. Eventually. This guy Adam I'm talking about, based on my response to the email I gave him, if he eventually does not change his ways, I don't think he's saved. Okay? Because he's not obeying God. Oh, yeah, you can... F I, I used to... I was terrified of my mother. Why did I disobey her? Can't go by fear. I'm not saying that's not part of salvation. Absolutely it is. I'm just saying you can't hang your hat on that all the time. Across the board. Across the board, obedience of God, absolutely. That's why, why, why do you think that God calls the people who aren't saved children of disobedience? So this is a revelation. I mean, I didn't really want to do this video, but I obeyed God. That's why I did this video. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. But I'm proving my own point here. I wanted to do something else, but I obeyed God. You truly good with your walk in God, you obey Him. You can fear God and not obey Him. You can believe in God and not obey Him. You can have a changed life and not obey Him. The devil also believe and tremble. I know people that change their lives still going to hell. So you cannot hang changed life across the board. No. You can't hang, hang your criteria on fear God and belief in God and change life across the board. No. But you can hang on do they obey scripture? And now if I give them this scripture, will he obey? Will he obey truth? Eventually. He might not obey right off the bat. Will he obey truth eventually? He better if he saves. If he not, if he does not get no chastisement, God loves who he chastens. If ye be without chastisement, ye are bastards, not sons. Chastisement and obeying sound doctrine. You do that, now, even like I said, even that's not foolproof when, because you're not God, you don't know their hearts. Remember that. But you can't apply that to yourself. So this is a video to someone saying, "Do I?" Because you have to examine yourself, see if you be in your fa the faith, know that Christ be in you, except ye be reprobates. This video is good for those people that doubt their salvation. This video is good for those people that question their salvation. Okay, are you supposed to doubt? No, it's a sin. You're supposed to be questioning your salvation. You better from time to time. Now, not question every day. God can't use you to question your salvation every day. Time to time, you better question your salvation. Even brother Brian Denlinger, he said he prayed a prayer at eight years old. 17, year, 17 years he went out thinking he was saved. But I he's I believe he's saved now. Why? He obeyed sound off. And he, he was a he believed in NIV for 18 years, by the way. That's what he said. I said eventually. I'm not saying right away they obey sound doctrine. Eventually. Remember, we have a choice. Not a free will. We have a will to disobey God. I'm talking to the saved people. If you're unsaved, if you're lost, you have a will not to obey Him. You cannot cease from sin. There's a, hit me, me. God, thanks, God, Father, Jesus' name for telling me
this right now. Yeah, the Holy Ghost just reminded me of something. That's another thing. A sinner and someone who sins is not the same thing. If I, if I didn't lose you already in this video, I guarantee I'll lose you now. It's not the same thing. What are you talking about? Of course a sinner is someone that sins. No. A sinner and someone who sins is not the same thing. A sinner is someone that's lost. Someone who sins can be someone saved if they obey. Oh, you lost me. Of course I did. You don't have discernment. You don't have discernment. Well, how am I supposed to know? Because you didn't give me no scripture. No, I'll give you scripture. Godly repentance is not someone forgiven, asking for forgiveness. And Brother Brian Denlinger brought this to light. Praise the Lord for him. He reminded me of this. Someone who godly has sorrow, has godly repentance, not someone who asks God for forgiveness for what they've done. They ask God for forgiveness for what they are. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Not God be merciful to me for what I have done or that what I have sin I did. Because sorrow, sorrow of the world worketh death. I'm talking about godly sorrow. Okay. You choose if you're lost, you don't choose fornication. Fornication chooses you. If you're lost, you don't choose smoke. Smoke chooses you. Evil pursues sinners. Do you know that? Or do you are lost? You cannot cease from sin. That's in the Bible. Second Peter. Having eyes full of adultery. Cannot cease from sin. They cannot cease. They can't help it. They're slaves. They think they're the master of sin. Lost people. No, they don't know they're slave to sin. You're not choosing to fornicate with that woman. Fornication, the evil spirit of fornication is choosing you. Well, that means you're saved. You cannot fornicate with that woman. No, I'm not saying that. They are fornicating, saved, carnal Christians out there. Well, what's the difference then? They have the heartfelt conviction. They know what they're doing is wrong. They do it anyway. They willfully sin. They know in their heart they'll get chastisement. That's the difference. Okay? A sinner is who is their state of being. Someone who sin is, is what they do. Okay? All you who all you who are truly saved know what I'm talking about. Okay? If you're saved, you sin, but you're not a sinner. Now there are a lot of people who ignorantly, ignorantly use that term. I'm one of the culprits. I'm not using that no more. I'm not a sinner, but I do sin. Think about it this way. Uh, Eric Phelps brought this me to life. Nazis. Nazis are Germans. Is that a true statement? Yeah. All Germ all Germans Nazis. Does that clear it up for you? No. Not all Nazis are Germans. To tell you the truth, Ed Hilt is not really a German. He's Austrian, but that's besides the point. He was a naturally born Austrian. But that's besides the point. All Nazis, all of them, are Germans, but all Germans are not Nazis. But, of course, we don't think like that, do we? He's a German. He has to be a Nazi. He's not saved. He has to be a Nazi. Careful. Careful. So, I end with this. You are supposed to know yourself. You're the only one on the planet who knows, supposed to know if you're saved. You. Not know nobody else. If you go by someone else, I don't think you're saved. You. Okay? And God will test you. By sending people towards you saying, you're not saved. Blah, 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 blah. How do you react? Okay. God convicts lost sinners all the time. With street preachers saying, you're not saved. How do you react? Of course I'm saved. Blah, blah, blah. They're not saved. You're not supposed to be right. You can go ahead and say, I'm not saved all you want. You're not budging me. I'm unmo unmovable. I will stand fast in the faith. Stand fast. Quit me like men. Remember, we're soldiers. What defines a soldier? Oh, it has to be fearless general. No. Even though that's a, a criteria. Well, it has to be believe in what he's doing. No. Even though that's a criteria. Well, what is it then? Obedience. A soldier obeys his fathers. By the way, I call my father general. Father general. You have to think of God, you have your father, as also like your general. Remember, you're a soldier. You do, you, do hardness as, you do hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You obey. Do I, do I have fear of God? Yeah. Do I believe in God? Yeah. Change life? Yeah. Do I always obey God? No. No. Not always. But do I obey the sound doctrine of the Bible? I better. Or I'm not saved myself. 
So I end with that. You go by criteria, two criteria, chastisement. If he truly say he'll be chastised and he'll sin unto death. And does he obey the core beliefs of the Bible? Not, not okay, he doesn't believe in a flat earth. He's not saved. Or he believes he doesn't believe in apostolic gifts. He's not saved. Are those heresies? Absolutely. Are those damnable? Damn? Remember, there's three types of heresies. If you divide over heresies, you're not going to have no fellowship. Everyone's heretical about something. Everybody is heretical about something. There's three types of heresies. There's heresies. Hoven has one of them. Uh, you're not supposed to drink. Alcohol is a sin. Is that a heresy? Yes. Is that a damnable heresy? No. You have heresy. You have a serious heresy. Christmas. Brian Dillinger believes in Christmas. I think that's a serious heresy. Serious heresy. I proved it in my other videos. Christmas is of the devil. Absolutely. Will I divide fellowship over him? No. It's a serious heresy. No. I'm not dividing. Now we're going to go to the real one. The damnable heresy. Is Christmas a damnable heresy? No. Are there people that believe it is a damnable heresy? Yes. But praise God. Go ahead. You you believe that's a damnable heresy, but I don't think that's a damnable heresy. What defines a damnable heresy? Will it cause someone not to be saved? I don't think it will. Not Christmas. Just because someone believes in Christmas, I don't think it will cause them to to not be saved. Will it cause a Christian that was saved not to follow, not to walk in God in truth? Absolutely. That's why it's a serious heresy. We're talking about damnable heresies. I don't believe this guy Adam saved because he's preaching damnable heresies. Willful sin and no eternal security. If I'm unsaved and I listen to his preaching, wait a minute, you can lose your salvation? What's the point of being saved? I'm not going to get salvation. Everyone, everyone that comes to me with this gospel crap, I'm going to reject. Damnable heresy. Wait a minute. So if I ignorantly sin, I'm saved. But if I willfully sin, I'm not saved? Well, I'm, I just willfully sin. I knew what I did was wrong, so I'm not saved. So I'm not going to preach the gospel because I'm not saved. Damnable heresy. You're supposed to divide, brethren. And remember, judgment seat of Christ. You will suffer loss to all the brethren bickering about these stupid heresies. Like I had these guys on YouTube. They were going back and forth about 70 week of Daniel. Back and forth about 70 week of Daniel. Now, if you're saved, you're not going to go through it. So is that a is that a is that a heresy? Yeah, it probably is. I don't know what they're talking about. Is that a damnable heresy? Will damn someone to hell? Are you being post trib Is that a damnable heresy? Just because someone's post trib No, because Co Hovind's folk post trib Is he he's saved? Ken Hovind's post trib Deep down, he knows he willfully sin. He knows he's pure trib but outwardly he's post trib No, you brethren, remember one of the seven deadly sins God hates is discord among the brethren, dissension. And that's these YouTube fanatics, these common crusaders. Bragging about their vanity. Look what I know. This guy's wrong about this. I got strong meat, but we're not established by meat. We're established by the milk. Hebrews, because we're in need of the milk, not of meat. Stop, stop convincing this guy about the the earth is flat, even though you have scripture backing it up. When there's these guys spreading this no repentance heresies. Remember, a soldier. On the front line, and he should shoot at the guy in front of him, not the sniper, all the way down there. Okay? Well, this is warfare. I'm not wasting my time on YouTube bickering back and forth about stupid, uh, her no, I'm not saying stupid, but heresies and serious heresies when there's damnable heresies out there. I'm targeting damnable heresies. You should be too. Stop wasting bullets on someone talking about alcohol is a sin. And uh, seven week of Daniel, you know, pre pre post trip. Even though post trip, I'm not saying post trip is not serious heresy. It is, but don't tell me it's a damn little heresy. Should you attack that? Absolutely. But what about the guy talking about uh, no no repentance? Which is more important? Don't tell me there's not importance of damn little heresies. Well, what are your list of damn little heresies? Very easy. First one is. King James Bible, which is Adam is not King James only, by the way. What a coincidence! Here's my list of damn little heresies that you should be attacking.
This is for the saved people. Number one, are they King James Bible? Let me go into that. Just because they're King James Bible does not mean nothing. Because Steve Anderson is King James only. He's not saved. Do they truly obey the King James Bible? Never mind they believe in it. I'm pretty sure King uh, Steve Anderson probably believes his word of God. Does he obey it? The devil believes and trembles. Does he believe, does he truly believe the King James Bible? Well, how do you know? Scripture. If he's saying, oh, you know repentance gospel, give him some scripture. How does he react to that? So King James Bible, obedience to the King James Bible, that's number one. Number two, oh, really, that's the only one. <sighs> they obey that. All the other ones fall in line. They obey the King James Bible. They will not beat your own repentance gospel. And they will not believe in faith alone in Jesus Christ. And they won't be post-trib. So, one take care of all the rest. It's funny, these post-tribbers are also no repentance believers. Isn't that funny? When you believe in one heresy, by definition, you're connected to other ones. If you're post-trib, you have to be replaced in theology. And you have to be against eternal security. They all connect. I obey the King James Bible. I don't believe. Believing King James Bible is not good enough. I obey. So naturally, I have to be. I'm compelled to be repentance than faith. Pre-trib. Not for apostolic gifts. That's for the sign of the Jews in, in uh, Jacob's trouble. There's another thing. There, there's brethren misnaming, not, not naming correctly the seventh week of Daniel. It's not Jacob's trouble. That's the last part. That's a heresy. Am I going to divide over that? No. Because that's not a damn heresy. The seventh week of Daniel is a seven-year period, not Jacob's trouble. Remember, God loves seven and he loves three. Those are his two favorite numbers. Seventh week of Daniel, seven years, is divided into three parts. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. The You will hear uh, nations shall rise, rise against nation. You Earthquakes and famine the troubles. These are the the beginning of sorrows. That's not a descriptive term. That's a title. The first part, those people that says, oh, the first three and a half years are, it's going to be lovely. It's going to be happy days. And why Jesus called it the beginning of sorrows. The first three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel is the beginning of sorrows. Halftime, the intermission, if you want to think, think about this as a game, Halftime is called the abomination of desolation. That's the title. That's not a descriptive term. Jacob's trouble is the last part. I have I hear a lot of people saying Jacob's trouble is what you call the whole seven years. That's wrong. That's a heresy. That's not a damnable heresy, so I'm not going to divide fellowship over it. Where's the scripture? I got two scriptures. Revelation says, and they will tread on the holy city for uh, 42 in half months. Does that sound like seven years to you? If your definition of the seven years is Jacob's trouble, then why doesn't he say he'll tread around the holy city for seven years? The holy city is Israel. Okay? Holy city is for 42 and a half months. It's Jacob's trouble. That's a heresy. But am I going to be on YouTube going back and forth with someone that I believe he's saved over that heresy? No! That's a heresy. Am I going to put a little more effort over someone that's post trip? Yeah, because that's a serious heresy. But am I going to shun him and excommunicate him over a serious heresy? No. But if someone comes to me and saying, Jesus Christ is not God, he's just a man, and uh, no repentance gospel, and no, I don't believe in King James Bible is a true uh, God, you better believe I will. I will give him two admonitions, a heretic after the first, second admonition, reject I'll give him two tries, and yeah, you're done. I don't care if he's saved or not. He's supposed to divide over doctrine. Damnable doctrine. Okay? Now, post-trib is a serious heresy, but that border is damnable. You know, I'm compelled right now to say damnable. Matter of fact, I mean, like I said, there's exceptions, brethren. <laughs> yeah, post-trib, I have to say that's a serious heresy, but uh, if someone says that's a damnable heresy, yeah, I'll I'll be with you. That yeah, I'll say post trib is a damnable heresy because that's hatred for the Jews. We can't have that. That can damn someone to hell. So hey, remember I'm supposed to obey God. I just obeyed him right now because I was just at the start of the video. I just said 
It's a serious heresy to be post-trib. Now I'm saying it's a damn low heresy. Well, I thought you're supposed to stay, stay in fast. Well, yeah, but I'm not supposed to obey God. You know? You have to weigh it out. Yeah, you're supposed to be staying fast in the faith and not be unmovable. You're supposed to obey truth, not love it. A lot of people are loving the truth, but do we really obey it? No, I don't think so. You know how I know they don't obey it? There's a lot of guys that are heretics, they're lost, spitting truth, saying we're in a simulation. A lot of brethren are not believing. Why? Because they're not saved. I'm not believing a guy that's not saved. He's David Ike saying we live in a simulation. Is that, is that a guy that's saved that says that? Maybe. Is he obeying God? Absolutely not, because David Ike is true. It is a simulation. I'm not saying he's saved, but he's telling the truth. Whether it be good or evil, you're supposed to obey truth. I don't care if it's Jordan Maxwell. I don't care if it's Obama. If someone says truth, I'll say he's correct. I, I'm ordered to render honor for honor. Eric Phelps is a guy that does that. He says that in his broadcast all the time. Yeah, this guy's not saved, but what he says is true. There's a guy that has obeyed God right there, Eric Phelps. He obeys God, absolutely. Okay, now will we agree on everything? No. But does he obey core sound doctrine? Absolutely. I believe he's saved. I can't say I know he's saved because I'm not God, but I truly believe he's saved. Eric Phelps. He obeys doctrine. Okay? Okay? He he doesn't just listen to the saved people, he listens to the lost because we're supposed to obey truth, not just love it. People burning in hell right now. They're in hell right now, underneath my feet. I'm pretty sure they fear God. Don't tell me they don't. They don't have godly fear, but they fear God. I'm pretty sure they believe in God. They probably even believe the King James Bible, but they don't obey Him. They don't obey the gospel. That's why you go to hell. If someone asks, okay, do good and, good and bad people go to hell? No. Do people that fear God go to hell? No. Do people that believe in God go to hell? No, it has nothing to do with whether they go to hell, heaven or hell. Then what, what determines someone going to heaven or hell? Simple. Do they obey truth. Do they obey the gospel? Not love the gospel, obey. Love and obey is not the same thing. I love my mother. I was afraid of my mother. I did not obey her. Because if I did obey, I wouldn't be getting chastisement, spanking from her. You're saved because you obey the gospel. And you get chastened if you, if you don't obey them. That should be the primary focus. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying change life has nothing to do with it. Don't twist my words. I'm not saying fear God has nothing to do with it. I'm just saying your chief indicators of whether or not you know you're saved or you know someone else is saved is do they really obey truth no matter where it comes from, from good or evil? And do, do they get chastened if they don't obey truth? That's what it is. If you do those two, all the rest is going to fall in line. I obey God, so of course I'm going to have a changed life. You understand what I'm saying? I obey God. Of course I'm going to fear. That's all I'm saying. Obey God, brother. Thank you.